to this week's episode of Pint with the Coach. Um, today's topic, we're going to talk about fitness um, over 40 and how things are a little bit different um, with our bodies, how uh, the, our approach to fitness changes a little bit from when we were younger and um, versus now that we're a little bit older. Our beer today I um, thought was appropriate as summer's finally starting to show up, the weather's getting a little bit nicer. We've got a Line and Kugel uh, Summer Shandy. So I've had this before, it's a nice, it's a light, easy drinking beer. Um, Kevin kind of turned his nose up at it today when I uh, pulled it out, but um, he actually said I should just get a Zima and have a Jolly Rancher with that. But um, everybody's got their own preferences on things. So this is a good summer beer here. So get it poured here. And little fact or little tip with beer pouring is that a lot of people will turn their glass sideways and um, to not get a lot of head on it, but you actually um, will keep more of the flavor if you pour straight down and then let the, the foam settle a little bit, finish um, pouring it in. It keeps more of the flavor of the beer in there um, where when you turn sideways, some of that flavor escapes from there. And um, this is a, uh, it's a shandy, so it's got a, it's a hef, uh, hefeweizen mixed in with uh, like some lemons and honey and stuff like that. So it's not a true Hefeweizen, but if it was, there'd be a little slug of uh, yeast at the bottom that you would then kind of drip on the top and let it fall down through the foam once it's all poured and that gives it uh, just a little more flavor and, and taste. So. All right, so fitness over 40. Basically our bodies change. Um, and we're using 40 kind of as a general age bracket. It's some where probably around 35, mid 30s, that things start changing. And we just find that what worked well for us in our 20s and, and early 30s just doesn't seem to work as well. You know, we when we find ourselves a few pounds overweight and just a little bit out of shape, it used to be we would just you know, go in the gym, maybe hit the circuit of machines, do, you know, some, you know, if it's guys, we would do like bench presses and curls, if it was um, for women, be like lunges and squats and, and things like that and then maybe do some cardio and the weight would come off and we would get you know just kind of get get our bodies back to where they were but as as we get older and after 40 we just don't it's not that easy and that stuff doesn't seem to work quite as well um, and a lot of that is just because our bodies are changing our you know our metabolisms are slowing down that's not necessarily an, the excuse for it uh, sometimes an easy cop-out that people like to have um, you know our metabolism still is you know, can function well and, and things like that, but uh, it just, th things are a little bit different. So we need to focus on activities that are going to increase our metabolism and increase our lean muscle tissue, um, which is basically going to bump our metabolism up. It's going to get us into better shape. It's gonna get us results faster. And the fastest way to do this is through strength training. And so, so as we get older, our bodies lose muscle tissue at a greater rate. Um, everybody's going to be a little bit different with that, but each, not necessarily every year, but maybe every five years um, of age, our, we, the muscle tissue that we lose, that rate increases. So we need to, again, focus on maintaining and adding to that and stimulating that. And the reason um, that we need to do this is the muscles, they drive our metabolism. They're the powerhouses of the metabolism. The inside each muscle cell, inside all cells, but the muscle cells, there are mitochondria in there. And these are little powerhouses that burn energy and basically create ATP, which is what gives our muscles the energy to contract. So when we stimulate those, the more of those that we can get stimulated, the more, more or greater metabolic effect that we can, we can have. So this greater metabolic effect is gonna bump our metabolism up, which is gonna get us burning calories, burning them a little bit more efficiently. Also, um, we lose, as we get older, we lose muscle tone. So by doing strength training, adding some muscle tissue to us, that's going to give us more muscle tone, more muscle definition, um, and actually make us look leaner. Even if we add a little bit of weight to the body, um, if we're adding muscle weight, we're going to, um, look more toned and things. That's why a lot of people that are thin, they um, are kind of skinny fat because they are, they're lean, but they have no muscle definition and they, um, their body just kind of looks soft and flabby. So for each additional pound of muscle that you have on your body, you have more calorie burning potential. The higher our calorie burning potential, the more um, 
the greater our metabolism is, is running. So when we do strength training, that's going to bump all of that up. And again, we're going to do this without getting bulky. I know um, a, a lot of women, they're they are afraid of getting bulked up. Um, even some men, they don't want to get, you know, all like super jacked. They just want to look look better, feel, you know, feel good, have a little bit of definition. So, as, you know, it, this takes a simple program, two to three days a week of strength training, um, basically focusing on total body movements, focusing on like squatting, deadlifting, pressing, pulling, carrying, um, core work from basically bracing the core and stabilizing the spine. Um, simple movements like that done two to three days a week is going to give you that muscle tissue and that definition. It's nothing crazy. Um, it doesn't have to be this you know elaborate program. Just something nice and simple will get that metabolism charged up. Will get your um, body basically looking and feeling better. A lot of people will ask, well, what about cardio? Why can't I? just do cardio or why doesn't that seem to work anymore and again it comes back to doing an activity that stimulates the muscular skeletal system and that needs to be something that's weight bearing yes running there is weight bearing because there's the impact on the ground but that impact is also um, can be uh, hard on the body and wear joints out basically running is the equivalent of standing on one leg and just jumping up and down a bunch of times so if you do say you go out for a half hour run or an hour run, that's like jumping up and down on each leg a couple thousand times. Now, a lot of people, they, if they have an exercise, they're not gonna stand in place and bounce up and down on one leg. They kind of would know that, yeah, I'm probably, this not gonna feel good, it's kind of gonna hurt. But what will they do? They'll go out and run and do the exact same thing. And then wonder why they have an injury. So with the injury point aside, we get back to um, our, the muscle tissue with the body and needing that weight bearing. So again, we're losing muscle tissue at a greater rate as we, we age. When we go and do just cardio all the time, what that cardio will do is it'll burn muscle tissue off of our body, which again is going to slow our metabolism. It's not gonna um, help promote, get that lean toned look that we're going after. And in the end, we're just basically gonna get more um, skinny fat. We may lose weight, but the weight that we're losing is gonna be mostly um, muscle. There, yeah, there'll be some body fat that comes off with that. And if you haven't been doing anything and you do go up and you start doing cardio or and you're gonna see some weight loss because you, you just went from, from doing nothing to activity, but it's not gonna get the change in your body that you had hoped for, um, at least as much as adding having strength training in there two to three days a week. A question I'll get asked uh, from a lot of people is, well, what about my heart? I need to get my heart rate up because that's good for my heart, or what about I need to, to get my wind, or any of that kind of stuff. And really, for to challenge heart, and any activity that increases our heart rate will we'll do that. With a well put together strength training program, you'll, you're gonna accomplish that. And like what we do here at uh, PNF, we're putting a couple exercises together. So you're doing one exercise, then you're going into another one, and you're getting then taking a break and repeating that. So what this is doing is it's stimulating your metabolism, letting it back off, recover, stimulate it, letting it back off again. And this works basically to real life strength. So the we get a cardiovascular effect from the weight training we're doing, but this cardiovascular training is actually more effective than a um, just like steady state cardio where we're running, jogging, biking, doing the elliptical because now not only are we increasing our endurance, we're also increasing our work capacity so that when we have to do activities of daily living such as yard work, lane mulch, um, cutting you know shrubs and dragging them over to the brush pile or just playing and chasing the, the kids or grandkids in the, in the backyard, we have much better work capacity to keep up with doing that, where if we had just been doing cardio, we may really struggle with that start-stop and exerting that force, and it's usually that muscular force that taxes our system and causes us to, to get out of breath and get worn out and, and tired faster, where with a good strength training program, we offset all of that. The, the last part with fitness after 40 is we need to focus on mobility and making the body move better. A lot of people look at this and they, they talk about flexibility or I need to get more flexible. And that's not always the case. We can actually get too flexible 
and then that can lead to some some of the same issues as not being flexible enough. And we see this with a lot of people that do yoga uh, or Pilates a lot. They're very flexible, but now they they're so flexible that they lack um, the muscle tightness, which gives them the stability on that joint. So they still run into joint issues just at the the opposite end. And um, we see this with a, a lot of stuff coming out of yoga with um, torn hip labrums from people getting into positions, going too far into that position, and they end up tearing that labrum on the hip socket a little bit. This can happen in the shoulder, this can happen in, in other joints, we can get some, some issues going on there. And with the trend of the hot yoga and things like that, that actually makes it worse right now because as the environment warms, the body's going to warm and we're able to get more range of motion that we really wouldn't necessarily be able to had it not been for that high temperature. So this can lead to some issues. So what when we talk about we need uh, to get the body moving better and get more mobility, what we're talking about is we need to get joint range of motion. So. A lot of the clients that we see coming in, their joints will have the range of motion, but as soon as they load it, and it could be just with their body weight, their body doesn't have the strength to come into that movement. So it puts the brakes on and stops them short with that. So if we get the, the muscle stronger and the activation in there, that's going to increase the range of motion. So a good example would be looking at the hips. If my hips are very tight, I can stretch and stretch and stretch them as much as I want. I'll get some more flexibility with that, but I'm not going to get the, the full effect or the effect that I want from that. So what I need to do is I need to stretch my hip, but I also need to work on activating my glutes. And this goes with pretty much every exercise. We need to um, stretch one side of the, the joint or the body, and then we need to strengthen the opposing side of that. And what that does, that gives us good joint um, stability, good joint integrity. It keeps our body um, very healthy. We accomplish a lot of this in our workouts through our dynamic warm-up. We work on, for the clients that we're working with, um, with the general population, most of them, they're tight through their shoulders, they're tight through their hips. So we need to open the fronts of their shoulders and fronts of their hips up. But if we just stop there, that's not gonna be enough. It's not gonna get the job done. We also need to go and activate the muscles on the backside through the shoulders, through the glutes, to get that to stabilize. Um, we also see a lot of tight ankles, so we can work on some things with getting that ankle range of motion back. Um, and that will take some of the pressure out of the knee from there. And, uh, but that again, typically comes back to the glutes a little bit. If they're stronger, they're gonna let the, the body sit down into a squat or a lunge or something like that without putting the brakes on. Um, and a lot of times when people hurt things, it's because their body is too tight and they're trying to stay too tight because they don't have the strength to complete the movement or get into the, that full movement. So fitness after 40, it's just a, a little different strategy. We're looking for strength training two to th uh, three times a week. Three is optimal, but I know a lot of people, they're, they're busy with kids and jobs and just life. Sometimes, you know, aging parents, things like that all play into there. So we say two to, two to three days, maybe four on the most. Um, I will say that a lot of people, um, they start to find that if they move every day, they feel better. Um, where having full rest days, they don't necessarily feel as good. But the, the thing we have to watch there is it doesn't mean coming into the gym and, and crushing your body each day for the workout. It could be coming, coming in, but maybe just walking one day or going outside and walking right day. It's, it's nice out right now. Um, maybe coming in, doing a mobility circuit, some Turkish get-ups, just some light things to, to get some movement, get some um, um, fluid going through the joints and stuff like that. You, you tend to feel a little bit better. Um, but again, three, about three st strength workouts a week, two if you're really busy, four at the max. Um, we want to work on um, our mobility and stability with the joints and again, strengthening the things that are weak, stretching the things that are tight. And then our cardio, we, we don't want to necessarily give up totally on cardio, but we just want to want to cut it back um, a little bit, maybe a couple days a week. I like walking for a lot of people, I tend to see the same benefits as that, uh, with that as, as running and, and jogging, um, with, but with less impact on the body, the body tends to tolerate that a little bit more. So, so that was this week's uh, Pint with the Coach. I hope you guys enjoyed it, I um, hope you guys got something out of it. If you have any questions or anything, post them in the comments, and um, 
you know, hopefully summer's here to stay and we can get outside and drink some beer and barbecue and all that fun stuff. So talk to you next time.